Hey everyone, my name is Jason Lenny and I'm the product manager for Release here at GitLab. Uh, and today I've tried to do, I've decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a recording of me creating a new project template. Um, so templates in GitLab are pretty cool. I'll show you what those look like. Uh, if you come to GitLab and you go to a new project, got to click on the button. Uh, what we'll get here in a moment is um, this create from template screen where there's a bunch of templates already available. There's Ruby on Rails, Spring, some pages templates, and we're working on adding more of these as well. Um, and what I want to do here is add a new one. Um, and I want to do this uh, uh, in this recording so uh, you can learn how to do it as well. Um, first thing to mention is I'm not a programmer per se. I know how to program a bit. Um, I can read Python code, um, and I hope that that ends up being enough for me to achieve this. Um, that's why I'm not doing it as a live stream, just in case I get stuck somewhere from not really knowing Python or Django. Um, but if you actually know the framework that you're implementing uh, as a template, then you're gonna, it's gonna be even easier for, me, for you than what you see here. Um, so uh, the first thing to do is to create a new project um, that we can use for uh, implementing the, um, the actual Django template that will be pulled in. Um, so there's really two parts to this process. There's creating the template that serves as the record um, or the, the thing that's imported into, into projects. Uh, and then there's also um, the boilerplate uh, that needs to go into GitLab, which is pretty simple, but, um, but I'll show you that part later. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a private project uh, of my own, uh, just empty. Um, yep, so building it in JSON, I'll call it, uh, I'll just call it Django. Um, a simple template to help get you started with GitLab and Django. Um, public is fine. Let's initialize it with a readme. Great. Uh, and so, so this is good to go. Now what needs to be in here is some, a readme with some instructions for sure, but also this should be in the state that a new project should be in. Um, so maybe the easiest way to think about that is the output of creating a new project, adding the GitLab CI YAML. Um, that's what needs to go in here. And then what your user is going to experience is when they go through that new project dialog and import the project, um, it's going to be in this state. It'll be a copy of this. It won't be a fork, but it will just be a copy. Um, so let's go over to the Django documents and see what we can, um, what we can do here. So writing your first Django app. Looks like um, we're gonna need Python. Let's see if I've got Python installed. Um, let's see. Terminal. What's gonna be the best way to do this? I think probably using um, VS Code is gonna be easiest for the moment, although, or maybe WSL. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and bring up uh, my WSL terminal here. Uh, and let's see if I've got Python on it. Okay, great. We do. And see, you can see I'm not exactly familiar with Python, so I'm not cheating in this thing. <laughs> um, let's see, Python dash M Django version. No module named Django, okay. Um, so how to install Django. Do I have pip? Let's see. I do not. Let's get pip. <laughs> um, installation. All right, let's try this out. It looks like we're using an older version of Python. Uh, and we also don't have write access to user local lib, so it looks like we need to run this as root. Um, let me get um, update Python. Uh, 
It's probably just the version of um, Python that's on Ubuntu here. Well, I think we can just start um, with this. So let's go ahead and sudo this. I'll try not to create too many tabs here, but <laughs> usually when I'm working on stuff like this, I end up creating a hundred tabs, but I'm gonna try and keep things as simple as possible. Okay, so it looks like we've installed pip. Um, so now we want to pip install Django. Um, just to avoid too many, um, too, ma too much installing of things, I'm going to not upgrade my Python right now. Um, but I think before I make this an official template, um, I would go back and upgrade my Python to something that's like more modern and it's not going to expire in a year, uh, and, um, and then just recreate this template. But in terms of teaching you how easy it is to create a template, um, I think that this is fine. Even with sudo, we're not able to install. Oh, we didn't run sudo pip. Hopefully this is not some terrible security flaw, but uh, this is a temporary WSL environment <laughs> that gets reset. Let's go back here and see what our next step is gonna be. Looks pretty straightforward. Now, one of the limitations of templates at this point is that um, you can't run a command as like kind of the first thing that happens. We do have an issue for that, um, where you can both pre-create environment variables or prompt for values that should be in there, as well as maybe run a script for the first time installation. So the way you do this for now is just go ahead and get your repository in the state that you want it. Um, and then, uh, so basically what I'm saying is that you want to run this command and then check in the results of this command and then add instructions for how the uh, end user needs to modify it. All right, looks like Django is successfully installing now. Get another terminal up here. Um, our template, and then we'll just use this as our working folder. Um, and what I'm gonna do is clone uh, that repo that I just created. Yes, here. A little strange working on one screen. Yeah, and accidentally clicked there. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and grab that repo. And then this will be the working folder that we use. Um, so this will be a folder called Django, and yeah, we just have our generic MD, uh, readme.md in here. Uh, so it looks like Django is installed. Do I have the... Okay. Note that only Django core commands are listed as settings are not properly configured. Installed apps, but settings are not configured. You must define the environment variable. Hmm. Uh, maybe that's going to be explained to us shortly. Or maybe it's just not relevant to this command. Um, so let's go ahead and start a, this will create a my site directory in your current directory. Um, let's call it um, Django template, just so that um, when people are now going to have to edit this project, they'll be able to ah, underscore then. All right, uh, because they're gonna have to edit this stuff. Um, all right, so we've created a website. Let's see what we ended up with. Wow, a lot of stuff. Oh, uh, that because I'm that's because of the git the git files. All right, so it looks like there's some description here of what these files are. I'm not going to worry about that too much at this point. Change into the my site directory and run the command. Um, all right, so we call this Django templates um, Python manage.py run server. Not sure why we have to apply migrations, but okay. Let's see if the server works. 
was that port 8000? Yeah. It worked. Okay, so we have a generic uh, Django website, which is awesome. Um, maybe we should just go ahead and run these migrations. I don't know why it would create a template in a state that uh, doesn't work. And the database, is that file intended to be checked in? Um, let's look for a Django dot git ignore and see what kinds of things are put in here. Okay, yeah, so that db.sqlite file is intended to be excluded. Um, so let's go ahead and add this. Not here though. Or no, actually it would go in there. Let's cat into it. It's a bit easier for a file like this, okay. Get status, all right. Get add dots, get um, commit, uh, initial commit of working site, get push. Try that again. Sometimes it's a misclick. I have a quiet mouse and I don't get really good feedback <laughs> if it clicks now. I got it for recording, but um, now sometimes I can't tell if I actually clicked something or not. Okay, so we've now got something checked in. Um, and then I think the next thing that we wanna do is try and enable CICD and see what happens. Um, and hopefully there's a Django template. There is. All right, so this file is a template and might need editing before it works on your project, sure. Python latest makes sense. MySQL, Postgres, DB database name, I don't know. Not sure what should go in there, but we can figure that out. Hmm. Don't know about the database. Um, I don't think we would honestly have one at this point, um, but let's see. Um, initial uh, dot gitlab ci dot yaml and then let's see let's just see what happens so we should see a pipeline run now it'll take a moment for it to come up yeah we've got a runner so it's going to grab the the image uh, and then run the commands that we chose In the meantime, what we can do is start working on um, boilerplate. Um, and what I have here, the best way to start one of these things I find is always to take a look at another merge request that did the same thing. There's just a few places where you need to actually add files. So to give a tour of them, there's a project new JS file uh, where you, you just define a couple of things here. A changelog file, which is GitLab specific, but we'll uh, get into that. Um, project templates is where the project template is defined. There's a spec that, uh, I'll come back to the pot file. There's a spec um, that validates that um, the, uh, the template um, is created correctly. Um, we have this gitlab.pot file, which contains localizable strings. We'll run a command later to, to generate this automatically based on this having the, the underscore there. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then the .NET Core target.gz file is the output of exporting this project that we create. Sorry, this one. Okay, MySQL container didn't start properly. I'm not sure. Fatal file does not exist. Okay. Um, so it's probably looking for the file in the root. Um, so let's go take a look at our GitLab CI YAML and see what's wrong. Yeah. So um, I think what we want to do is just modify our before script uh, to change into the directory that has our site. So. Alternatively, we could move everything up. 
Um, or I wonder if we can run it from, let's see, what, what did we call our site? <laughs> Uh, Django template, okay. Let's try it this way. Um, point to uh, Django template folder for manage.py. Okay, now we can go check this pipeline again. I suppose that since Django has a, um, it's interpreted language, there's no real build step, like there might be in other projects. So to the, te the testing is the main thing that's being accomplished by CI. And yeah, so then what I'm gonna do over here, um, I'll, just go back to the repository here, open this in a new tab so I can keep this for reference, uh, and then pull up the web IDE. Uh, and then we'll start working on our boilerplate. Let's see. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. We don't have a database, so this is probably expected. All right, and so let's start editing, like I said, our, our files here. So in the IDE, we wanna open app, uh, assets, JavaScripts, project. Uh, and then project new.js. And take a look at our list here of different templates and we're just going to add one. Um, so maybe just take this spring one uh, and add one called Django. Yeah, adding the, the image is something that we're going to have to do later. That's a little tricky as well. Okay, so that's that file. Um, and then lib GitLab project template. Project template.rb. Then we'll find a similar sort of thing and we'll just put it in the same spot. So we'll call this Django. Um, the description. Uh, so a ready-made Django template for use with GitLab. Um, and then this file is what we're going to have to add to get the image to work, but I can pick what the name will be. Um, project templates slash, okay. Spring illustrations, logos, spring dot. Oh, sorry, this is the path to the, um, where we're eventually going to put the, um, uh, put the project template once it's final. Um, and then this is the illustration path. So we'll just call this the Django SVG. Uh, and I'll have to add that image to a different project in a moment. Um, GitLab.pot will be generated. Uh, yes, and then we need to update the spec as well, um, basically to have this same information so that when it validates the code, um, it works. So it's in the same folder, just underneath spec. Spec, uh, lib, GitLab, and then project template again. It's a little bit different. Um, and again, we put it after express, so I'll just put it in the same place. Okay, so, and then this is now described class dot new. Uh, it doesn't need this anymore. Technically neither does this one, but I'm not gonna, I'll fix that in a different issue. It doesn't cause a problem, but uh, okay. 
Uh, and then the, so the next thing that we need is our working template export. So let's see what happened. Okay. Could not open requirements text. So I suppose what's happening is that we need to be in that directory. So let's see. Go back to our repo. GitLab CI YAML. Um, and then in our before script. Um, yeah, let's the first thing we do, let's change into the uh, Django template folder. Now we don't need to do this or or worry about what folder that we're in the wrong folder in the other case. So uh, change in all jobs to the Django template folder. Okay, and then hopefully we get a good run this time. It should the test should pass. <laughs> Maybe it would be good to to just kind of go run over here and uh, go into the Django template folder, and then it was uh, Python manage.py uh, test, I think. Let's just see successful outfit, output. Yeah, so very, very simple, not much there. You can take a look at our readme file as well. Um, some things that you would want to put in here. I think um, probably link to this tutorial. Um, this, uh, so instructions. This template is based on the tutorial at this link. Um, you will want to change the um, Django template site name to match whatever uh, you prefer. Um, and then normally I would list out the different locations that you would want to do that. Uh, but since this is just a sample, uh, I, this isn't going to be a real one um, because I'm going to go update my Python version before I do anything here. Um, I'll just leave this kind of as a, uh, giving you a sense of what um, of what this might include, and then so add instructions to README. That's fine, uh, and then let's go check on our pipeline. I also have another Unix host here that I use for parts of the, the build process. I'm recording on my Windows machine. Normally I just use straight uh, Unix all the time, but, um, uh, but this makes things a little bit easier for recording. Um, so from this host, we can, uh, we can run a couple of the commands that we need to run to generate the .pot file and so on. Um, so then we've done that file. The only thing that we haven't added is the uh, tar gz. Um, so, uh, so once we ver verify this, we'll export that. There is an additional step when you export the project to strip all of the previously run pipelines, issues, and things like that out. Um, GitLab will take care of that for you. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, we want to make that easier to use, uh, but at the moment it's a little bit complicated. Um, so uh, feel free to just you know, point us to your project and we can, we can handle this uh, export part for you. Okay. Fatal file does not exist. It looks like that's allowed. Uh, maybe not. Um, okay. So what's happening here? Checking cache for default file does not exist. Failed to extract cache. Pip install dash R requirements dot text. Let's see where all these different files are that it's talking about. Maybe I've, Okay, there is no requirements.txt. Um, so maybe that's something that you can add if you are then depending on uh, other things, but let's take a look. Um, I think probably what make, it makes sense to do is wrap that command in a if exists. Um, so let's take a look at this. Let's find this, okay. And then um, just to make sure that I get it right, um, so bash test file exists. 
So looks pretty easy. Is there a one liner version? There we go. That looks like what I'm looking for. This file or Okay, so now we'll only run that command in case of um, the requirements.txt file actually existing. So, or should Django be in there? <laughs> should there be a requirement.txt with Django? Hmm. Let's try this. So only use requirements requirements.txt if it exists. I sort of suspect now that I've thought about it that there does need to be a requirements.txt that says Django maybe only. Um, so maybe let's, uh, while that's building, we can just take a look. Nothing mentioned in the tutorial about about this. That's okay. We'll figure it out. The joys of setting up a new framework. Um, we can pull up our so Django one eleven dot twenty. Um, so right. Um, yeah, let's see what see what this thing is doing. Pipelines. That's a way newer version of Python. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. Let's make a requirements.txt that points to you, uh, to Django. Because I, I really do think it's needed. Because it's not going to be installed on that uh, uh, on that image. Uh, and then let's take a look at here. Django equals equals equals. Okay, so add um, Django to requirements um, for pip install. Uh, and then I want to see what that cache message is about also because I, I don't really understand what that's talking about. And I do want to fix that before I make this official. This folder is cached between builds. Um, Okay, the pip cache. So maybe that's just failing because it's the first run. Um, in which case, I think that that's okay. Let's just take a quick look at this documentation. I don't know if we need to make that folder. Hmm. Well, we'll keep it there. Let's see what happens. Cancel this and go take a look at our pipeline. And let's see if we can install Django this time, which would I think be a good sign. <laughs> and we can come back over here and take a look. We left this off uh, with, um, yeah, adding this class. Uh, let's go look over here and right. So yeah, the only thing that we're waiting on now is is getting this tar.gz file uh, and then uh, uploading it. 
Okay, module not found error. No module installed named Django. But okay, so maybe I've got okay, let's just edit this <laughs> and and get rid of the change that I made. Uh, now that we've got a requirements.txt, this should always succeed. Um, so uh, always run pip install to make sure that we have got Django. Uh, actually, and you know what? Um, just to make sure that nothing strange is happening, let's match our Python version to the Python version that I was using locally. Um, we can do a quick check on Docker Hub. Uh, to make sure that it has that label. It, I'm almost certain that it does, but uh, 2.7. Um, yeah, there's a 2.7 label, so uh, we, will, we will use that. Just to make sure everything is in sync. We've got both of our builds running here, so we can watch this one to see if we've managed to fix the other issue, uh, and then also make sure that our, our test is working. Yeah. Failed to extract cache, but uh, that's okay. Aha! It looks like we were installing something, <laughs> and we ran the test. OK, so this is our build that was running on uh, Python 3.7, um, which, um, which did succeed. But um, I think that we want to validate that it runs on 2.7, since that's actually what we created the template for. So let's um, go ahead and export this. So the way that you do this is go into settings, export project, um, export project. And then in a moment here, when you refresh this page, it really just, just take a second or two. Yeah, there's a download export button. Um, so I'll open up this folder. I'm just going to rename uh, to uh, django.tar.gz um, just so everything is consistent. Uh, I'm doing this on my other monitor, apologies. Um, but then what I'm going to do is go over here to my web IDE and then go into the uh, vendor folder, uh, vendor project templates, and then in here you can see all of the other templates. And I'm going to add, oh no, that, apparently that doesn't work, so we won't do it that way. Let's upload a file. Oh, these are personal files and uh, desktop. Uh, and then all I'm doing here is selecting the, um, uh, oh, sorry, it's in my downloads folder. And then I'm selecting the django.tar.gz file. Um, <laughs> Okay, I don't think that that's right. Um, so let's get rid of that. <laughs> Make sure that that's not in our. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll commit that uh, elsewhere. Um, let's do that commit from um, from the command line. So let's go into here. Git pull. Um, just to pick up all of our latest changes. Ah, oh, sorry, this is the wrong image. So where I want to add this is um, on my C drive, um, code, GitLab C, GitLab folder. Just a, OK, yeah, so this is just a repository. Let me go grab my branch name over here. Um, OK, well, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and commit these changes here uh, to the boilerplate. 
Um, the commit message is add boilerplate for Django template. Stage and commit. And then let's head back into our the project. Uh, so gitlab.com slash gitlab org, gitlab CE. And let's make a merge request for our new branch. Um, we'll leave all the defaults for now. That's fine. I can edit those later. Uh, what I want to get here is the uh, the name of the branch. Um, so that from the command line, I can do a git pull. And then I can check out that branch. Probably want to give a better merge request name <laughs> next time. Um, but that's okay. All right, so then go into vendor templates, uh, or vendor slash project templates, and then I'll copy, um, let's see, mount C home. Uh, it's users, my personal user account, downloads slash Django dot tar dot gz dot. Um, git add dot, git commit dash m uh, initial Django template content, git push. Okay, add my access token here. And then we should get that file uploaded. After a moment. And that's really it. Um, so at this point, uh, the best thing to do is, um, well, let's, uh, let's head back over here and let's watch our change come in. Should be here in a moment. Um, but we've got our boilerplate here. We need to add the change log, which is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, but this would be a good point, actually, to bring in the GitLab team uh, and just ping someone here. Um, and we can help you process that, uh, that export uh, and make sure that everything is good to go uh, and that there's no issues or pipeline results or anything like that included. Um, and then we can get this merged. And um, yeah, like I said, that's pretty much it in order to add a, uh, a new template. Uh, the hardest part was for sure uh, figuring out the Django specific details, but if you're creating a project uh, a project template for something that you're very familiar with, you're going to be able to do A, better than I did. You'll probably use the right uh, language version and things like that. Um, but adding this boilerplate uh, and getting your project created and exported is pretty simple. Uh, and you could probably do it in an hour um, in, and have the quality be much nicer. So uh, I think I'll end the video here. Um, I apologize. I had You probably noticed there was an edit at one point, but it was because um, something confidential appeared on the screen um, and uh, there was no other content missed. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I would love to chat about it. Uh, and I can, I'd be happy to help you also create another template. Um, so just let me know. Thanks for watching.